Thank you. So the cello and thinking outside the box, or thinking outside the wooden box, better yet, thinking outside the wooden box with four strings, or my favorite, thinking outside the 201-year-old wooden box with four strings. So what is it that makes the cello so magical when a person hears the cello played at a high level for the first time? And one of the things is the cello encompasses the entire range of the human voice, a truly unique quality for a musical instrument. And an example, everyone knows what middle C is here. And if we go one and two octaves below, we have what's called great C, and that's G-R-E-A-T, -E not G-R-A-T-E. So great C would be, be the very bottom of the male voice. And if we have middle C, an octave above, and an octave above, it's high C, and that would be the very top of a woman's voice. So it's not just that the cello can cover the range of the human voice. The cello is also uniquely capable of covering and conveying human emotions and feelings. And to give an example, the cello can sound angry. Okay, or the cello can convey love. Not just that, but the cello is capable of imitating crying or sadness. So what is it that makes sound on the cello? There are two principles involved. Number one is vibration, and number two is friction. And they have to be coordinated in a right balance. If we have vibration without enough friction, we get a sound that lacks substance. And if we have too much friction and not enough vibration, we get a sound that you might associate with a young child learning how to play the violin or the cello for the first time. And this would be a test of human patience and endurance. So we could have a... Right? Not good. So thinking outside the box, what helped me to not only beat an incurable illness, but to really help play the cello? I come from a late start, having started the cello at age nine, and I wasn't serious about the cello until relatively late in high school. But in the seventh grade, I started to play the guitar, and I got very serious about it. And in two years, I was the lead guitarist in the first of several rock bands I played in. So with the electric guitar, it's a different instrument. We have frets, we have thin steel strings, and it takes very, very little effort with the left hand. And you have, for the right hand, you have an amplifier that does all the work. So I used my skills as a guitarist to learn how to make sound on the cello. And when the violinist Itzhak Perlman heard the legendary Yasha Heifetz play for the first time, he said he couldn't close his mouth for a week. He said the sound he made was generated this incredible heat like a tornado standing in one place. And when I heard the great cellist Rostropovich play when I was 16 years old, the sound blew my hair back. And it was like he had an electric cello with a volume knob that went up to 11. So one thing that I used, not only the guitar, but also I had studied martial arts for a while. And if you think about how a martial artist can break a brick with the bare hand, 
A brick is stronger than human bone and flesh, yet the martial artist is able to accomplish this seemingly impossible feat. And it's all about learning how to focus the energy of the mind and the body into a point on the hand where you can overcome a physical barrier. And not just that, a baseball pitcher. I had studied baseball pitching for a while, and if you look at a baseball pitcher that can get the ball to go at a velocity of 100 miles an hour, it's all about learning how to coordinate the energy of the mind and the body into the points in the fingers that will release the ball at that velocity. So the cello is strikingly similar in the sense that it's about learning how to focus the energy of the mind and the body into the hands, namely the right hand. So to coordinate that sound, we would need to get the friction and the vibration right. And then what we add with the left hand is a pulsating pitch change called vibrato. And this is what brings the cello very close to the human voice. So one other thing that I used to think outside the box actually took place 2,500 years ago before the cello ever existed. And this is the great philosopher and mathematician named Pythagoras, who devised what we know as the harmonic series. So a young person once asked me, after they listened to me play, they said, how do you know where to put your fingers? Right? Am I using the force? No. The guitar has frets, the piano has keys, it's all mapped out for you. On the cello, how do we know where this is? So Pythagoras came up with the harmonic series, which is mathematical division of string length. And just to give you an example, this is what harmonics are. So every one of those pitches is a division of string length. For the cello, I use, four harmon I use seven harmonics, one quarter. See, the string starts here at the nut, and it ends here at the bridge. That's the length. So if we divide that one quarter of the length, one third of the length, one half, two thirds, three quarters, five sixths, and seven eighths. So having known these and memorized these the way a pool player knows angles on the board, every range, every note on the instrument is within range of one of those seven harmonics. So that's how I'm not using the force. That's how I know where I am when I play the cello. So we've made some examples of human emotions. The cello can also imitate other sounds, and this is another unique quality of the instrument. Using Pythagoras's harmonics, I can imitate the sound of seagulls. Right? And I can also Physics, I have the Doppler effect, the compression and decompression of sound waves. If you were standing on the side of the highway, you might hear, okay? And if you ever go to the races, you might hear race cars sound like this. So taking one of those vehicles that's not street legal on the road, you might hear this. And if you operate that vehicle at a speed that it's capable of, you might hear this. And then one of my favorites is the cello is also capable of imitating the sound of rodent control or the mouse trap. <laughs> so having gone over some of the lighter features of the cello, I'd like to play something written for the cello by the great master Johann Sebastian Bach. And these are two gavats from his suite number six in D major. <laughs> 